How's it going guys? Welcome back to the shop and today I finally get to explain something that I have been trying to get my hands on for a long time now. Something that I really enjoy, something I think is super cool and that is the still 4Mix engine. So we're going to really tear into this thing. I want to take it all apart, show you the ins and outs and I hope you guys stick around because it's going to be fun. So since around 2005 guys, still has been creating what they call the 4Mix engine. Uh, so it actually has four stroke cycle technology. So you got your regular intake, combustion, power stroke, and then your exhaust stroke, your four basic strokes of a four stroke engine. But it doesn't have a crankcase that holds any oil, which gives it multiple benefits in the sense that you can run it at any angle, upside down, which is really cool. And it also means that it's lighter, there's, a, there's fewer components. Uh, there's a whole bunch of benefits. But before we get into it too, too far, I wanna show you exactly through an animation on the TV, what those strokes and all those cycles are doing in this particular engine, because it's not like a two stroke. Uh, so really simply put, if you guys are familiar, familiar with a two stroke engine, a two stroke engine uses the piston to block off the port in order to do the either the intake stroke or the exhaust stroke and all of it happens in 360 degrees. Uh, so basically one movement of the piston will create an entire power uh, stroke. This is a little bit different but it's really neat and you're going to see why in a second when I show you the TV. Before I go too far as well guys I should mention that if you wanted to know a little bit more about the two stroke technology if you just google uh, two stroke or two cycle animations, you'll see tons of nice animations that clearly identify the intakes and the exhaust strokes uh, and it's it's pretty easy to follow. And something else I want to add is I'm not you know sponsored by anybody and I hope I'm not infringing on any copyright issues because I am showing you the still.com website with their own animation here on the screen. So it's only a 20 second animation. I'm going to try and follow through what it's doing so the engine is split in two halves right here. What we see is the front of the crankshaft and this is the back but at a 45 degree angle showing the cam gear. So let's hit play here and see if I can kind of follow along in the 20 seconds. So this is showing you intake stroke, the valve opens and then once the valve closes you get your power stroke, the spark plug ignites the fuel, pushing the piston down and then once the exhaust gases make their way up through the exhaust valve, the cycle will start itself again, just like a regular four stroke. And that's right guys, this uses 50 to one mixture with valves. How cool is that? So the real cool thing about this engine is exactly that. It is a two stroke running mixture. It's a basically two stroke engine with valves and it uses the four cycle engine uh, as its base. So it's super cool. At least I think it is. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So let's open it up and there you have it. We got a valve cover right there and I want to prove that there's valves in here. So let's open it up and I should say as well, since I'm talking and I'm going to try and do this whole video without editing very much is uh, I got this engine from a local contractor. He was using it on his trimmer, uh, sorry, not trimmer, his brush cutter, but they are everywhere. If you have any still product, chances are you may have one. I've seen them on uh, trimmers. I've seen them on line cutters. Uh, well, those are the same, but I've also seen them on uh, pole saws. Uh, they are a very versatile engine. It, you know, push brooms, super cool. So there you have it. We've got our valves right there. And as I rotate the crankshaft, they move. Now, Unfortunately, this engine is toast. We're going to rip into it and we're going to find out exactly what happened. Uh, I already know because I was in here and I diagnosed it. But uh, this is really what I find super exciting about this engine. The fact that it's got valves. So what does that exactly mean for this engine? Well, being that if you are, you're a manufacturer and you're trying to lower emissions, it's a kind of a struggle right now. That's why things are going to battery powered and all that other stuff. Uh, but still likes to use 
well, engineering. They have been engineering stuff for many, many years. And what I like about this is that the mixture doesn't get lost during the charge. So on a regular two-stroke engine, a good portion of that charge air from the crankcase that gets pushed up passes right through the exhaust port before that piston can close it off fully. So that means higher carbon emissions, uh, and because the squeeze on the two-stroke engine is much shorter, you don't get as much torque. Uh, and this is a complete close-off of that entire cylinder head. So when you've got that combustion chamber fully closed off with these two valves, you're going to get maximum power, and you're also going to get good reliability. Now, it does need a little bit of maintenance, and from time to time it's just to in my experience, because I see these often, would be to adjust the, the valve clearance. And that's maybe once every season. That's about all I need to do, depending on how much you use it. Um, if you use them often, I would definitely recommend using it or doing those adjustments more often. So just for fun, let's pull the plug. Just to make things easier to rotate. And I want to get into really what this thing is all about. So I'm going to pull the manual recoil as well to expose that cam gear. Okay, now we're just going to remove the starter ring. Just like that. Then we're going to remove the cam cover and expose all the lovely lovely technology that comes inside and just like that we remove the cam cover to expose da, 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 da. you got your cam gear down below here with your followers and as you can tell as it rotates your valves are also doing your thing so let's keep diving in here. We're going to pull this out here. Where is that stuck in there now? Oh, that looks like it's seized. Okay. One pin out. And then that's the other one. And tiny little baby push rods. There's the other one. Where's the there's the other one, just like that. So you got your two push rods, you got your two followers, and your two pins. And of course, you got your cam gear. So this cam gear is driven directly from the crankshaft. And inside here, there's actually a decompressor, an automatic decompressor, might I add. So as soon as the engine runs up to a certain, uh, well, basically idle, the fly weight inside here, will fly out and then you got this little then you got this little divot on the exhaust stroke or sorry on the exhaust valve that will uh, suck in and then they will give you full compression just it makes it easier to start that way there you don't need you know a 3 8 rope to get it going and a he-man arm to get it pulled and this is pretty well the main guts of this engine. I mean, there's really not much else to these. Um, obviously, you've got your valves that you can, you know, open and close by hand now because if you had to do a service or something. Now, the only thing that is a little bit more difficult is if you had to remove the piston and change the rings. That is done uh, by removing all of this and then you take the, uh, the connecting rod out from the bottom and it's kind of like a mono head, I guess they would call it. But you're probably wondering, like, why is this engine here and I mean you're telling me that it's good reliability and all this other stuff well I'm telling you it is good reliability provided that you run the right mixture so what happened here is unfortunately this engine ran with a straight gasoline mixture like nothing in the oil a mistake was done from one of his workers and after about well after the full tank noticed that the engine was knocking and you know once the damage is done it's done so they ran it for probably another couple of weeks and then it just grenaded. So uh, I have actually pulled this engine apart. I've took a look inside and there's really not much I can do about 
you know, I could probably save it if I had replaced a whole bunch of components, but to be honest, he said he was going to buy another one. So one thing I do notice as well with the newer versions now, we're in 2023, these versions here use a cable that run across this cam and pull up on your throttle. Now, still has changed that, and they've actually used a linkage. The cables actually fray, they wear out. Uh, I see this often. I work on these engines very often, um, being a small engine guy, and they are honestly very durable. I firsthand see these all the time in a commercial environment, and I would recommend them to anybody. Again, not sponsored, but I love these engines. So hopefully, this is giving you kind of a little bit of an explanation of, and just a little bit of a teardown as to what's inside these engines, what to expect if you ever have to do a servicing. But really guys, the only servicing that needs to be done is to just make sure you're running good quality oil, 50 to one mixture, and from time to time, check your valve adjustment. Uh, that could be for another video if you guys are interested, just comment down below. Uh, and also, I'd like to note that you're probably wondering what lubricates, well, the top end here. Well, there is actually oil that is going to come from the bottom as the piston gets pushed down. It transfers the oil right up through the cam gear, up to through uh, following the uh, push rods. And then there's also, if I light it up here, there's another transfer port on the intake side as well. Um, so that's how that gets lubricated. So there is a cycle of oil and gas mixture that makes its way through, kind of, you know, oiling everything with whatever oil you have added in there. Uh, so I hope that kind of answers a few questions for some people out there. Uh, just something I wanted to put together real quick. Nice short little video. But uh, I hope I see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this little quick teardown. If you guys want to see more of this teardown, I can continue. Again, please comment down below. Hope you have a nice day, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.